Is it true that women do this thing called monkey branching, a term used to hold on to one tree while your tail is still on the other, a term used to, it's kind of like cheating, isn't it? I'm in this relationship with you, but I got my back up. Uh, that to me is cheating and men do it too. My dad did it. In fact, he ended up marrying the woman he monkey branched with, whereas my mom, she never dated after her divorce. I think that the some of the terms that the manosphere throws around comes from their negative, I'm going to go there, mommy experiences, and they've come to see women as evil, conniving, cheaters. You can't trust them because they'll monkey branch on you. They'll marry the beta guy, but they'll really want the chat. So you better be the chat and spin the plates because if you marry them and have kids, boy, they'll take your money and they'll take your kids. So don't get married. It's a very negative view. And it comes from their um, negative experiences of women. I'm not saying that there aren't women who do this, but there are men who do it too. It's called trauma and dysfunctional behavior. Men do it, women do it. And I think um, a lot of the stuff in the manosphere is geared towards um, people's ideology of, you know, women have hurt me and this is how I'm going to explain women and therefore all women do this. And yes, if you're a man who's guarded, if you're a man who's a people pleaser, you will always get women who take advantage of you. You will attract a narcissist. If you're a guy who's a control freak, you will, you will get women who are docile and people pleasing. Like you're going to attract what you are mirrors. We're going to, your relationships are mirror and the world we see is a mirror. To an extent, because I really think that there's a lot of dysfunction out there these days. Um, I've only known one woman who did the monkey branching. Actually, the three I know. The one was kind of more of a friend, and I saw her do it. Because when we went out, she would tell guys, Hey, I'm just about to leave my boyfriend, but I need a new relationship first. And she was kind of advertising her relationship status, her availability. And she did find someone. The women who will do this and the men who will do this, I'm going to say that they have um, abandonment issues and they have difficulty being alone um, or they have to do it for financial reasons. They're not able to leave one relationship till they have another one because of financial reasons. To me, um, the women that I know myself included typically when a relationship is ending, we're trying really hard to make the relationship work. This is kind of the pattern. I really am trying to make this work. Can we go to therapy? So the focus is on making the relationship work. And then, you know, there's a lot of pain and disappointment. It's like, okay, now I moved out. I got to find my own place. It's not like, can I get another guy? It's like, I got to leave this guy. And it's more like I'm um, going within kind of a thing. Like I have to heal myself. I have to get whole. My idea always was, okay, after my divorce, I will be single for two years and then I will date. Like to get my groove back, to get my center back, to come from a whole place. And not everyone thinks that way. Not everybody wants to, not everybody is independent emotionally, mentally, and financially. And so there could be a desperation. Like if he isn't supporting me, I need another man who will. It could be emotional immaturity. I don't know how to be alone. But this isn't an exclusive domain of women. There are men who cheat. There are men who monkey branch. And there are, um, you know, uh, whatever the manosphere makes up about women, I could say about men. Dysfunction is not the providence of one sex. Um, they have come up with all these different terms to explain the behavior of some wounded people. But I don't know if they've taken the time to look at the be wounded behavior of men or to look at their own wounds and their own trauma and their relationships with their moms or why they're attracting those kinds of women. And I'm going to say that a woman who is whole and healthy isn't going to want to date a guy who's trying to spin plates or sees women as these creatures he's got to control so that he won't be hurt. Um, you know, it doesn't seem open and loving and 
trusting and authentic and vulnerable. You know, I got to play the game just right because uh, you know these women, they're going to cheat on you. They're going to fuck you, but they're going to fantasize about Chad and one day they'll leave you. So you got to stay one ahead, of, step ahead of the game and keep those young ones and keep those plates spinning. Uh, it's, uh, you know, there are a lot of dysfunctional people in the world, a lot of wounded people in the world. And um, what I've seen is that a, some of the people who have issues know they have issues. They get super triggered and they're doing personal development work and they're having a really hard time finding out why they're triggered because a good therapist is hard to find. And some of these emotional things kind of are deeper and take time, especially if you have childhood PTSD, I highly recommend the channel Crappy Childhood Fairy and the workbook by Pete Walker, which I'm just going through now, the audiobook, kind of trying to see some of my own stuff. And it's very interesting how people go through life based on what, how they adapted as children. Like say as an example, if whenever you cried, your parents slapped you, you're going to not cry anymore. You're going to learn to freeze. Or if you cried... And you put your and your parents slapped you and you put your hands up on your face just so you wouldn't hurt and you got punished harder for doing this, you're gonna to learn to freeze and not protect yourself. So you're a child's natural instinct to fight or flee abuse is stunted by you're gonna oh, you're gonna fight me? Oh, you're gonna run away? I'm gonna hit you harder. So those kids learn to freeze or they learn to fawn and it's all they know. And it's a like um it's like an emotional flashback. So you get you're an adult in these situations and you don't remember that's what happened, but somebody starts yelling at you and you start you have an emotional flashback and you just freeze. You don't know why you freeze, you just freeze, as an example. And the good news is that our brain is neuroplastic and we can unlearn these behaviors. But what I'm getting at with the manosphere is these guys are coming from an unconscious wounded place when they see women in this light because it's not the way I've ever seen women. It's not the women I know. It's not who I am. So they obviously don't have a full understanding of women because I don't never hear them talking about the women who left their husbands and shared custody and didn't ask for money and never cheated on their husbands. They don't talk about those women ever. And I also want to know if these guys have ever gone to therapy or done any inner child work or done any somatic exercises or trauma work. Furthermore, when it comes to evolutionary biology, they talk about what women usually like, but I don't know if they've looked at all women in all situations because the world is changing. Yes, there's a part of me that's an animal that uh, wants sex so I can reproduce and I don't know why. Or this man doesn't smell, his pheromones don't smell biologically good for making a healthy child together. So I don't like him based on his scent. Okay. But there's also uh, social stuff like women can now earn money. So we don't need to look for a guy, sell it for some guy just to um, pay our bills. We can make our own money and have partnerships. And a lot of young people are having partnership relationships. In fact, in a few years from now, women in their 20s will be earning more money than men in their 20s. Um, and it is in our nature to want the best we can pull. I can pull hotter. I can pull more successful, you know, because there's an aspect of another person that like, what are you going to do for me? You know, what are you going to do for me? Something pretty to look at, something nice to fuck, someone to make me dinner, someone to be a good mom to my kids. What are you going to do for me? Provide for me? I mean, men are not that good looking. If you're not that good looking, what else have you got? Come on. <laughs> it doesn't mean that we are like, you know, just after money or resources. Do you have like love? Are you going to be loving and kind? Are you going to work so I can work part-time? And there is, I don't think we talk about this enough, that the men are physically stronger and have like a stronger nervous system. They're made for going out and competing in the world and doing construction and highways and the military and the firefighters. And yes, I know that some women want to do it, but not that many. 
and they're not as strong as the guys whereas women want to be nurturing and we want to make the home and we want to have babies not all of us but a lot of us so I think ideally a woman works part-time and therefore it makes sense that we pick a man who earns a little more money because we're going to work a little less but we're going to take care of the home and that is not paid so for all those reasons I don't think that we're like gold diggers I think it just makes sense to amplifier roles by the way women who overworked they never want to have sex you want a woman to have sex with you don't make her work too hard I don't it's not a turn on it doesn't make us horny when we're tired and stressed so um, that's just what I want to say about the manosphere they come up with these terms to explain women because in their view women are deceitful cheating bitches so in order to you know you gotta you know you can't trust them they either they have a high body count so what do you the best thing you can do as a guy since they are gold diggers just get as much gold as you can and get a young one and just keep fucking them all don't get too close because when they leave you they'll break your heart and they'll take their children with them and why would you want to raise someone else's child that is just so weird in the world i grew up in men love children and in the olden days even it was a the community raised the kids this whole thing of my seed my blood i'm not going to pay for you is so narcissistic i don't even get that whole mindset when um, my kids were younger, we had exchange students. And I mean, I just treat them as one of my own. I didn't think, oh, I don't want to pay for this kid. That is just so selfish. I, I, don't, I don't get that world of, I'm not going to pay for somebody else's son. That's his genes. Who cares? It's a soul. It's a child. They need love and they can love you. They don't care who's their real dad. Some of the manosphere stuff to me it's just an expression of a lot of the wounds and the pains and the dysfunction that exists among some people and um i think that they should go to therapy and see you know if they can um learn to trust because i i don't know any women who do any of that kind of stuff now granted i will say younger women are more attractive come on they are more attractive but so are younger men. They're more attractive too. And, um, but they're uh, less mature. I will say it's true that a man um, can get a woman based on his um, charisma, personality, and resources. But that makes sense because he's sure not going to do it on his looks. Men are not beauty objects like women are. And I will give you the fact that women can get attention without doing anything. However... We don't always want that attention. To be honest with you, it's very annoying and repulsive when guys are coming at us trying to stick their dicks in. Why are women getting attention? We're not getting attention because men want to marry us. We're getting attention because they want to plunder our vaginas. So that is not a, a pleasant attention. It's not an attention that feels nurturing to my heart. I don't feel seen. I don't feel valued or appreciated. It's not like, oh, Sharzad, I really love, you know, how you were able to, you know, lift that weight and do that Turkish getup. And, you know, you're so good at finding a way to explain things and make sense of the world, you know, like that. It's more like, oh, you're so pretty. Um, usually we don't want that except from the guy that we like. So we do get more attention, but I will say what women have um, that men don't have we um we have social permission to talk to each other about our feelings and what's going on and that's one thing that um, a lot of men don't have is someone to talk to yeah so I think that life is easier for a woman especially with me and my job I um, I'm able to take pretty good care of myself not working that much which is making me like, why would I want a relationship? Some people have suggested that I quit my job where I work seven or 10 hours a week, get another job where I would be, I would have to work 60 hours a week at least to make the same money, that I work 60 hours a week uh, and then start looking for Mr. Right. 
as if he's suddenly going to come along when he didn't come along for the first two years after my divorce when I wasn't doing the job I have now. But I'm just supposed to work 60 hours a week, decrease the quality of my life significantly, get all stressed out, not have time to work out like I do, um, just so I can get a relationship? Fuck that. Fuck that. You know, all that bullshit. You know, if you don't like me or my job or my high body count, there's the freaking door. I don't need you. You know, I don't need a man if he's going to make my life worse. And a lot of those manosphere things make my life worse because they're bullshit. I'm not a monkey brancher. I don't plunder men. I don't cheat on men. You know, so don't lump me in with whatever wounded bullshit you guys have going on. Not you guys, but the manosphere guys. You know, and act some kind of like experts on women. Like you have it all figured out just because you think women are conniving bitches because your mom was a bitch. A lot of them, their mom was a bitch. They were abused by women and that's why they hate them. My son likes like women. Why? Because I was nice to them. They felt loved by me. Their women are nurturing to them. Trusting. You're going to attract the kind of women who you are. The women you're attracting are a mirror and the men I'm attracting are a mirror. Now, there are, there's a shortage of high quality single people, especially as we get older. That's true. But the men who, the way that people treat me are a mirror. And once you heal your inner stuff, you will quickly weed out people who are not vibrating at your level. Like, um, if I used to go for emotionally unavailable guys, now the moment I would notice someone's unavailable, I would lose interest instead of pursuing and keeping interest as one example. If someone used to go for abusive men, the moment she would notice that he's telling her what to do, she would be done. So you weed, you find things quickly when you do your inner work. And that's where it is. It's not that all. Um, and uh, I, again, I don't know if I said this before. I would like to hear these manuscript guys talk about what's wrong with men, which they never do, and the therapy that they've done, which they never do. And their relationships with their moms, which are never discussed. I rest my case.